know I spoke one on one with President Trump about his last campaign. I'm going to get his administration to respond to this. I'm now that I have your attention, Woo-hoo! all praises, glory be to the most high and let's make history and class is in session. Are you listening? Hello, everybody. My name is History Williams, and this is the Making History History Making podcast. So uh, we are all quarantined. We are all locked up and I am stuck in my closet having to do a recording session when I'm usually going out and about and interviewing people. So um, I decided to do podcasts and shows about people who have uh, affected your little world history and made this this big hunk of sloth feel special and huggable, I guess you would say. So one of those yes. people, is, you slightly chuckled, I heard it, uh, uh, is uh, my friend, uh, Samantha Champer. <laughs> and, uh, and I call her uh, Sammy. But uh, Sammy mm-hmm. is a fascinating person because I went to undergrad with her. And the first real moment, I know that I met you before this, but the first real moment that we shared was when Prince died. Do you remember that, Sammy? Yeah. Oh my God. I uh, remember that. I was like, what the fuck? No, Prince didn't die. Like, <laughs> what the, what <laughs> We're the, going on about that, too. Yes, oh my all, God. All, all the songs. I'm pretty sure, like, we probably never heard a Prince song in years, technically. But it was just like, <laughs> fuck, Prince died. What the hell? I mean, it, I mean the last it was time like I. The sh- go ahead. It was, it was like Michael Jackson all over again. It was just heartbreaking. Yes. We're going on about it and Ford's like, what are you guys doing? Yes. Yeah. And Ford was like, what do you, what do you worry about? Like everybody else was like, why, why? And you were the only real person that was like connected with me when it came to that. It was like, but you got to understand it's Prince. It's like right? music technically oh, died. Made me grow up on that. <laughs> yes. Yes. Well, if you're in the Midwest, it makes no sense how you don't grow up on a little bit of Prince. Like, I mean, oh. nationwide, but uh, or worldwide, but for sure the Midwest, this man <laughs> is from there. Like, <laughs> so you got to respect it. You got to love him. You can't just not hear any Prince. Yes. So uh, that was our true moment that we bond. That was like when we had solidarity in our friendship because <laughs> we <laughs> felt that way. <laughs> but like, uh, I, I don't, I'm going to test you on something. Do you remember mm-hmm. the first time that we met and we talked? Was it the first, wasn't it in the hallway? Neither of us could find where um, our 184 class was. Um, the CMJ 184. That would that would be the one I was in the Kirkhoff yeah. Center. That would be in the Kirkhoff Center. Yeah. So we walking were walking around, lost, and it's in the basement. <laughs> yes, in the basement. We were all sitting down, like at the low stools, and we were all like powwowing. Um, mm-hmm. I did my best, my Tyson impression at the time. So, <laughs> <laughs> um, so yeah, like we all talked. That was the first time we all talked. Of course, we did the the little awkward icebreaker prior to the teacher oh, actually. Yeah showing up to the class so uh, <laughs> that was our first real time but we've been friends like since then technically um, I even try to get like Instagram famous with like does this make you feel awkward going up to people's faces <laughs> and like like having my my mouth like uh, about two or three inches from their ear you could feel the cold oh, wind yeah. from my breath or hot wind I guess whatever you want to call it <laughs> <laughs> awkward and I got like I still have those Instagram yeah. videos up like uh, if you ever get oh a chance, my God. I still have those I videos. I remember up. though, it's just, hey guys, we're gonna do a quick video and then we can do class. <laughs> yeah, we always did that, and then like uh, our our favorite thing was um, 
uh, we we had the group chat through like group me or whatever like that, right? The group oh text. Oh my god! And like Professor Ford. I forgot about that. Yes, I think I still had the picture of like, would you sit your ass down? Like, <laughs> when, he was, when he had a, uh, when he had a, he didn't even say it. It was just the way that he looked when he was pointing down to. Um, oh, I forgot what his name is. Um, one of our classmates. Was he it was, Preston? No, it wasn't Preston. Oh it was, wait. It wasn't Preston. We used to make fun of him because he had the uh, um, he had the eye of um. Man, my brain is like really blanking right now. Mordor, because <laughs> we used to talk about like him reading the prompter, the teleprompter all the time, and he would not blink at all. Uh, oh my god, I know who you're talking about. I can see his face. I get, yeah, I could completely I, see his face too. Uh, he he dropped uh, the Eye of Sauron. Um, so yeah, but yeah, he would not blink. He would be like reading that prompter <laughs> and not blink. But it was so funny because like we were in a class working on like editing video, and it was so funny because they showed Professor Ford point down, and it looked like he's saying like sit your ass down. <laughs> <laughs> so we had those um we had the croc videos uh like uh i mean i always the got my croc, croc the crocs i buy crocs he because of his crocs he's yeah. got fuzzy crocs now yes i see the those winter crocs <laughs> yes i i remember the one time that they were saying that like everybody everybody was like canceling class and he said yes there will be class and i have my crocs <laughs> Like, how do you get an email? <laughs> I, oh, my God. Savannah and I always, since, like, I TA'd with him for the last three years that I was there, we would constantly, like, make fun of his cracks and those they're a fashion statement. They're comfortable. They're accessible. And you know what? They're great for producing stuff. So. Yes. <laughs> yes what's that have to do with producing <laughs> yes well you gotta be comfortable you know I, you know shoes. <laughs> I, I, I think that I'm gonna be if if I do get a job as a professor I will be the black James Ford in a lot of ways because <laughs> ever since then I've started I could not like I bought them out of a joke like some Crocs <laughs> and I bought not the ones that look like obviously Crocs but I bought like the brand of them and they look like regular shoes and stuff like that yeah um and ever since I put them on, I swear to God, I felt religion. Oh, so they they're f- comfortable, man. Oh man, my feet feel tingly. <laughs> I will never go back to tennis shoe ever again <laughs> because, <laughs> like, I like it's either Chucks or Crocs. I swear to you. Oh. So, yes, yes, it's so good. It's, Crocs are amazing. So, uh, <laughs> now that we were down in the memory lane, so Sammy, what are you doing for a living? Um, so right now, I just got a job out of college in South Bend. Ooh, I'm working for, the judge. The, yeah, working for um, WNDU, and it's like the station that used to be owned by Notre Dame. So we do like a lot of Notre Dame affiliate stuff for them. Gotcha. Okay. So I do um, all the production stuff, pretty much. Go figure. She looks like she's Irish, but she's not. <laughs> uh, sweet in all the way man <laughs> yes definitely <laughs> so drink like an irishman though that's for sure <laughs> that's definitely it that's definitely it so um how how are you liking it so far like you don't have to like, i actually love it you love it like i hate i hate the hours that i go in at 2 a.m every day and i work till about 10 in the morning everyone's like calling me they're like hey what are you doing tonight go, i'm sleeping true <laughs> going to bed at six o'clock my mom's trying to call me she's like why aren't you answering your phone well sorry mom i gotta get some sleep <laughs> gotta get some sleep but, I, I i get that yeah. i definitely get that um like you know, the crazy thing is like, I'm supposed to be putting myself on a schedule and mm-hmm. apparently like I set these alarms for like six o'clock in the morning, like five o'clock in the morning or even like seven o'clock in the morning. And my wife's been telling me that like, I'll wake up, I'll straight up just say, cause we got Google first off doing it. Like our actual Google assistant doing it. Yeah. And so like this little speaker just like bings and like whatever. And apparently in the middle of me, like dead asleep, I'll say, stop. <laughs> <laughs> and it, it, would, it, would, it would just be over with and then like if my phone goes off I would just hit ignore I would ignore the alarm and I tell her straight up like I get mad because I'm like I realize I'm sleeping later than her and the kids and I'm straight up just like I cannot believe I just did that I, I, I really don't 
see myself <laughs> doing it, but apparently I've been doing it. I just been like straight up. Like, I mean, stop. 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 <laughs> Just stop. There's so many people. I've heard that their Alexa, their Googles, they have their alarm on that. Yeah. And they'll be half asleep like, Alexa, stop. Yeah. So like, yeah. <laughs> and then they're late. Yeah. I, so yeah, I've been, um, so like, for example, like I have a deadline today. I was supposed to like post mm-hmm. a vi- uh, my next episode uh, for a show because um, I'm really like, what I've been trying to do is like, not make the videos ahead I mean the audio ahead of time just to keep myself busy with everything else because I feel like I, if I don't have a, a goal or something to make me say hey you have to keep busy then I'm just going to get yeah. relaxed and then I won't I won't produce so what I have been doing is like hey I know that I have to pro- uh, post this video or this audio by tomorrow and so I'm kind of delayed right now with the audio but I am posting it constantly because I have so much. I uh, like you right now will be I'm got my schedule and I'm looking at it on the wall. You're episode twenty. So <laughs> yeah, I have a lot of episodes. Uh I'm uh I'll be at episode twenty-three by Monday, technically. So I have a lot of episodes. I just haven't been putting them up because of the fact that I've been trying to do the whole one week podcast at Raw. <laughs> but I I'm really gotta get myself like organized. I've been practicing getting organized. But you gotta wake up at two o'clock in the morning. So shame on me for trying to feel bad about my life. <laughs> uh, yeah, but everyone's got their own struggles. Trust me, I got my alarm set for technically I have to be there at two thirty. But no one's in the building, so I get there around like three ish. Uh-huh. My alarm goes off at two ten. I go, no, two, 20 more minutes. <laughs> you got it. You got it. You Running can do out it. the house, putting clothes on. <laughs> yes, I. Yes, uh, I am. I live my life by being late. Uh, literally, like you know, the day that I said, hey, you know what, time doesn't matter, is when because uh, I go see, I go to therapy. And mm-hmm. when my therapist, almost every session for my therapy session, my therapist has been late. I was like, shit, <laughs> you know what I mean? This lady is getting paid to, to do this and I'm OK with her being late. <laughs> so I realized that this person has a Ph.D. and they have no concept of time. <laughs> Me. What can I, I love it, though? The most educated, the most qualified people, too, are probably the most disorganized people and it's awesome yes makes me feel a little bit better about myself. yes yes swear to you you don't you do not understand like I, how i get to that point now uh you've been working there for a few years uh so what are some of your your greatest like testament of stories like you got any kind of cool stories about being in um, your field so one of the cool things that happened recently So I'm coming up on my year mark for this station, but I've worked at like the stations in Grand Rapids before, but never have I actually experienced breaking news. So New Year's was my day that I was supposed to be like, uh, you get to sleep in, come in a little later. We're not going to do three hours of shows. We'll just do an hour of shows. So my time got pushed back to I got to be in at 5 a.m. We're going to do a six o'clock newscast. And that was it. Um. Midnight comes around, it's one o'clock now, and my producer calls me. He's like, hey, the sirens are going off. It's just an silent alarm. So it means if our commercial breaks are off, that people will see like black um, just their entire time on the screen, or they have NBC peacocks, depending on what's happening. So they're like, okay, you've got to come in early. Um, We just need to get this taken care of. It's been going off for an hour now. So I'm driving from home, Got my sweatpants on, didn't even get a chance to get breakfast, racing to work. All of a sudden, I come up along downtown South Bend. Um, It's about 15 minutes from my house, and I see police tape blocking off about three blocks wide on every street. So you had to go all the way around and pull up, and this officer goes, we just had a mass shooting in the first of the year. So we were dealing with the first of the year shooting. I get into work. We're scrambling. It's me and my producer. Our anchor wasn't even in yet. We're trying to figure out how we're going to get on air, how we're going to beat um, our competitor station. And scrambling to find reporters. I'm recoding. 
all of a sudden we get into the show and two more shootings happen. So it was the craziest thing is I'm coding while I'm doing a newscast. So our system is um, no longer is there a full studio of people where you can say, hey, we're going to go to this camera at this shot. You need to get ready. It's I pre-code. Um, so I put in like, say, this camera shot at this time with this kind of transition with these mics on. So I'm trying to do all of this while we're in the middle of a show. Breaking news is happening. We're going on and off air. And then right after that, we had breaking news from NBC about the coronavirus. Oh, yeah. No. So we're dealing with the shooting. And then NBC is telling us about how China is hitting their mark as of New Year's with um, this coronavirus. And now ever since that, I've never worked in a situation now that's been normal and this is my first year in like real news i worked for like the um pbs stations before so it wasn't like it was all pre-recorded everything to look live well, but now we're live and we're dealing with this pandemic that's never been dealt with before in news wow wow like <laughs> Yeah, because you worked for WDVU, um, and yeah. I I will say that like yeah I I get where you're saying that it's pre-recorded and um, you're not the NPR route where every morning you have to have a new show right yeah so that has to be kind of like a I don't know me, me being weird I feel like that would be thrilling to me it's almost like a doctor it going is. to the OR for me so. That's, you know, it's sad to say that they had the mass shooting and so many else's people's lives are at danger. But yeah, I consider that situation like a, a doctor going to the OR. It's kind of like a rush to me. That So how did how do you feel about it? I absolutely love it. So as, as sad as everything is, and as much as people want to say people who work in the news are just sensitized to everything. I kind of put it in the perspective, my dad's an officer and you have to become sensitized to everything. You can't let anything affect you. Like we say breaking news is our saving grace in news. We have breaking news. We can get rid of those fluff stories. And now we have hard hitting news that people want to hear about. People want to see what's going on and how can they change it? Um, If I were to think about every shooting that's happened, every stabbing, every sickness this pandemic how many people are dead no one would ever be able to do their job you got to look at it as this is a story that people need to hear like right now we're essential business and everyone's freaking out we can't go into work we can't do this well i'm just as much putting my own health and other people's health on the line by having to give you the news every morning so all these people who keep just saying fake news fake news it's not a big deal like you're not going to get any information otherwise for, unless you were from us. So now you need us kind of thing. It's just weird. Well, uh, and I'm sorry to kind of bring up a bad memory because I'm glad that you kind of brought that up is mm -hmm. your first experience is actually not from that. Your first experience about the fake news was actually when you and Jacob went to the Trump rally. Am I correct? Yeah. And yeah, you guys so are students and they were treating you like that. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, so we had half at the Hillary half at the Trump rally. It was the same time. And I was actually reporting then. So I hated reporting, but I was like, this would be so cool. I'm standing on the inside of these people trying to get like their opinion on Hillary. So the, I was on the Hillary side. Everyone else was downtown. Um, Jacob and I started getting harassed by the Trump people. They're standing in this little corner with this giant Trump sign yelling at the people going into the Hillary camp. Um, rally they're trying to tell me hey you need to come interview us you need to do this and we're interviewing both sides we need to get both sides people there protesting the people there um for hillary and someone starts yelling at me you're fake news because you don't want to talk about trump you want to cover him he's not a politician well hillary she killed the it, this was around the time that um the articles from the guardian the fake newspaper that said hillary killed an fbi agent in a fire What's coming out and that's what they're screaming at us they're like fake news you guys are wrong and it's like we're working for a student newscast we're not any national we're not any local thing yeah. we're a student news company and we're getting screamed at already yeah like yeah, and the sad thing is who and like um i want to put some context to this is that like 
you're conservative and nobody realizes this. Mm -hmm. You you yeah. consider yourself conservative and Republican. So mm -hmm. it's funny that like people call you, see that you're fake news, but right. like technically you're on their side. And like, I don't know you're, you're, when you were voting, who did you vote for? But I do remember that you, you, you said that and you're like, I'm fucking conservative Republican. I'm not scared to admit that. <laughs> like while we were yeah. all talking about it while we were in class and like it came to a culture shock because somebody just like you seemed like you're mm -hmm. so easygoing liberal and like you were like, yeah. nope, I'm, I'm, <laughs> fuck it. You know what I mean? I, I'm, <laughs> shit, Reaganomics gave me some good economics. Right. <laughs> you know, like, you, <laughs> you know, like that's what you're saying. And so I, I, I enjoyed that about it, about uh, like you and, um, mm -hmm. one of the things is that like people mistake is that like I do so good with opposite people um, mm -hmm. and I connect more so with so many opposite people like my wife is completely the opposite of me I think you met my wife before <laughs> so my wife is like yeah. super quiet and I won't shut the fuck up and so <laughs> and like I I I I don't consider myself liberal. I say that I'm independent and I, I, I stick to that and I hold to that mm -hmm. because there's people who are conservative and like who are Republican that I do support. I, and mm -hmm. not necessarily in these days now because I feel like they lost their way. Um, yeah. But with that being said though, like, that was surprisingly enough. I was kind of like, good for you. Like, you know, on the, on the inside, but I was just still yeah. shocked because I would have never seen that out of you. So for you to go through that situation right there, it mm -hmm. it kind of crushes my soul a little bit and like discourages me about what uh, President Trump agenda is because he doesn't realize that you have supporters who are working in media and you're saying fake news, fake news yeah. and fake media. You know, you mm -hmm. had uh, Tommy Lauren who was a really big Trump advocate and she got fired from the blaze just because of the fact that she stood up for feminism. Oh, well, women have a control right. of their, not, not feminism, but women have control of their body when it comes to abortions. Like, that's yeah. crazy. You know, the See, direction. I was, watching, I was watching Bombshell recently and it goes over the whole, the debacle of everything that happened in Fox recently. It was the um, Megyn Kelly, uh, Gretchen Carlson, that kind of incident. And they were talking about how the Murdoch family just like covered it up. And it's like there was one part and it was saying like, you can't be um, any LGBTQ kind of thing within Fox. You would be fired on the spot kind of thing. And like even stuff like that, you can't be LGBTQ to work in. Uh, Fox, you can't be a conservative and working in CNN. You have to be a liberal to work for an NBC station. Like, there's so many political aspects as well as like personal vendettas and ideas that these corporations hold, and it drives so many people away. Like, I've seen so many people start off in production based stuff and they love it, they love news, they love video, and then they find out like these big scandals or these big complications of having to work in certain networks just to get a job there it's crazy i just i feel bad yeah I, I will agree with that and that was one of the reasons why i'm kind of excited about the route that i'm going because of the fact that mm -hmm. you remember we kind of spoke about it earlier when we was kind of we were off air is that mm -hmm. i I love talking about politics i love talking about society and like that route and even my my show itself i talked about social issues but i ingrained so much about politics into it and so yeah. for me to graduate and get out of school and realize that fuck i don't want to go to george washington university for journalism anymore because like that was one of my go that was one of my schools that i wanted to go for for my grad degree is george washington yeah. university because they do npr there first 1a is there like i wanted to be diehard into the like the poli sci area or the npr a aspect of it and i realized that shit i don't want to do that because that's not where re uh, really a lot of issues were i was one of those firm people that believed in like legalized gay marriage legalized um marijuana and let's mm -hmm. move on let's move on to real issues because at one point right. in time that was i don't know you probably remember too that was like really the hardest issues at one point in time like oh my god our first year was well gay marriage just became legalized it was recent like 20 what 2014 2015 ish it was just starting to become like a norm for gay marriage and then it's like why are we fighting over stuff like that 
politics is just so messed up nowadays. No one either wants to talk about it yes. or do anything about it. They yes. just want it to sit there. And, and you, I mean, the sad thing is, though, too, is that I think that like a uh, liberals do it too and they don't realize it too is I think that it was easy for Trevor Noah to make a fun and I'm going to bring up her name Tom, Tommy Lauren mm -hmm. when he did an interview with Tommy Lauren and she said that I'm a uh, I'm a millennial I don't believe in labels and he said that like well it's funny that you had to label yourself to basically say that you don't believe in labels yeah and so <laughs> uh, I think that that is a narrative that nobody realized that they actually do constantly day to day is that you have to sit there and say, well, I'm liberal or I am I consider myself mm -hmm. not so conservative or, you know, I'm Democrat. And it's became about labeling so much, whereas I think the part where we we sit there and scream out, make America great again, is not because of that, yep. but it's because of the fact that um, I think truly to make America great the first time, I guess that's the easiest way, is to not worry about the labels and more so worry about yeah. what is going to be the sustaining Thing to survive these issues which of yeah. course is giving people equal rights I don't know how you feel about any of those specific things I think abortion was the only one that we talked about am I correct that was yeah. the, that was the only one that we really kind of stuck on which I'm not going to let you dig deep on that one but mm -hmm. uh, like uh, abortion abortion and like being able to say that I say like hey people have control of their bodies like or who they want to be so and I and I mean yeah. that very broad when it comes to like trans people so on like you have the mm -hmm. right to be who you want to be and it's very that is an issue but being labeled trans I don't think that should be as important as I should just have the simple basic right to be able to go to the doctor and say that yeah. I feel these pains, doctor, or you, you a girl, which that's going to be my question next in a second mm -hmm. is uh, I'm a woman or I'm a girl or so on. And doctor, take me seriously when it comes to my medical issues. So yeah. um, now going back into this, there's a lot of I like the way that you talked about politics inside of the workplace. How do mm -hmm. you feel as a female? working in the workplace when it comes to a news broadcast do you feel like any difference or do you feel like everything is just kind of like okay generalized what because so we've been taught it's differently so weird it's like weird because i took the route that most people don't want to like i'm went into production there's not many female like anything in production like um we don't have a single female photog i'm our only female director um trying to think of and we don't we have one female editor so production wise we have two girls that's it so i don't ever feel neglected or hated because like my production company or my newscast company is so small that we only have five people in my department which is super nice because they respect me. Um, the news department respects my opinion. They do all that. But when it does come to being kind of negated is the fact that like I work with all men, all men. There's not a single other woman there. And it's my responsibility to make sure that the office is clean. No one else cleans it. No one does that. That's kind of where the part that comes to is these simple life things have been ingrained into so many people that it's a woman's responsibility to do X, Y, and Z. Not that I can't do my job, it's more of the social aspect that I feel on a daily. Ah, that's, that sucks. <laughs> that, that really sucks. Cause um, you would think that like, cause you work for NBC technically, so yeah. Ar arguably, one could say that like NBC is considered uh, a more liberal Very station, so, yeah. liberal <laughs> station, uh, which is irony for you. Uh, <laughs> so right. more liberal station, and so to still to see and hear that those values are still held on, it truly. Mm -hmm. um, me as a person, I really, truly never believed that there's no such thing. That, uh, there's diversity has always been an urban legend to me and altruism. I never believed in that was true altruism. Like, even though, like, I love being a good person, but I, I'm, I'm doing it for selfish reasons. And the reason being is because of the fact that I feel like being a bad person or if I punch you, 
my first reaction is going to be that you're going to punch me. So I'd mm -hmm. rather not punch you out of the purpose of me surviving, not getting hit back. You know what I mean? Yeah. So um, that's why I say I just never believe in true altruism in that way. And so um, to sit there and hear that like you're going through that, it's not the fact, excuse me, that it's a bad thing that you are having a job you're the only female which by the way fucking badass first off Sammy yeah. you're pioneering the <laughs> motherfucking game so um, but it also is kind of heartbreaking because of the fact that the other guys don't see that like yeah obviously I'm gonna relate my situation back to my wife like my wife is badass at teaching and mm -hmm. I know that I stand away and I stand out the way when it comes to her teaching and cleaning but that's her badass thing that she knows how to do so like i i realize that i'm never gonna clean up as good as my wife i i realize <laughs> that even though like i have compulsions and like i'm like anti-germ i know mm -hmm. that i would never be able to get rid of those germs the way that i like it unless my wife cleans it and so yep. like it's not me being like sexist it's me being like I'm scared of germs. <laughs> so <laughs> I'm scared of getting dirty. And um, at one point in time, like my wife would tell you, I was the one cleaning, uh, like when we first met, cleaning, washing dishes every time I go somewhere. Like even when we go to bar barbecues, or uh, like mm -hmm. I have to be the first person to open the bag of chips to get chips because of the fact that I do not trust people's hands. Like even now, like with food, I only buy packaged food. And the reason being is because I'm scared of all of those weird little things, right? And so, yeah. um, but I'm not going to just sit there and tell my wife that, that, that her place is there. And that, that's what it seems like. Um, people just mm -hmm. say, assume that like, just because of the fact that I don't say that that's your place, that doesn't mean that I don't say it by physically showing that, hey, you need to just clean up the spot or this spot would never get cleaned up if it's not done by you, you know? Yeah. <laughs> so <laughs> like, um, you mean, that sucks that it that you go through that, Sammy, because like, I mean, yeah. it kind of shows the contradiction in that. But I will say way to go for being a badass by pioneering because <laughs> I remember when we were in school, you wanted to be behind the board. You and Savannah wanted to be behind oh, yeah. the board. You guys hated being on camera. <laughs> you, Sam, yeah. Savannah and Korea, those three. Savannah, by our senior year, she was anchoring. Yes. She's like, oh, I'm going to anchor again. I go, uh, no, nope, I'm going to stay right here. <laughs> yes. Yes. Uh, fast shouts to Savannah, by the way. Um, but yeah, like, I, that's the crazy thing too is that like by the time I graduated I was like I want to be behind the board I want to produce so uh, a, you remember it was the opposite for me I wanted to be in front yeah. of the camera I wanted to be that person <laughs> so um, badass I, I just have to like nail that in that's badass now uh, what would you say as I will say this I don't notice a lot of females in media and they do the females mm -hmm. that I do see in media are stereotypical is that that would you agree with that very much so for the fact that um new so i never really knew this until after i got really close with our anchors and meteorologists yes every um our anchors and meteorologists have no say in what they wear okay so they have to get everything um approved designed picked everything like that they have to get their hair down to their hair color and what color makeup they're supposed to wear for females i think that's where it comes very stereotypical our males on that hand have to have a certain look to them for every single one they have to wear the dark blue or the like the navy color suits or black suits only that's all our reporters can wear but we do have our one um reporter he is very charismatic free going everyone loves him and he will push the boundaries a little bit more with what he can wear, like pattern wise, or he'll wear a great pla uh, gray plaid suit or um, like a bright pink shirt underneath his suit jacket. And there's nothing's being said to him, but there's constantly being said to her, like our meteorologist. She can't wear, you can't wear patterns. You have to wear your hair curled. You can't um, have blonde hair. You have to have red hair. This is what the viewers were like. So stereotypical stuff isn't by fault of anchors isn't by fault of production or whatever it's something that viewers want so this is based off of viewers so 
people don't realize that what everything is happening in the news is not because we do it just because we think that's right. We do it because this is what people want to see. If we put something else on, they won't watch it. If you put a different anchor, where if you put your favorite anchor in a hairstyle that they don't like, people won't watch it. So. Wow. It's, yeah. Because, uh, uh, damn. <laughs> we, didn't, we didn't talk about that in journalism is, issues, issues in journalism. <laughs> right. Um, I mean, that was one of the things that always came up is that like your yeah, anchors are all these old white men, but they was always if there was a female on there, they were always like the meteorologist or they would be the reporter who's this mm-hmm. blonde white girl, you know, yep. but it, it was always do, uh, dominated by white folks. And that's what we was told in issues in journalism that's crazy to sit there and say that like no it's deeper than that it's much much more deeper than that Mm -hmm. because go ahead yeah people people don't realize that you can say all these issues or say oh this is working that's not working but it's the it's the viewers that choose things so people who complain about there's always death and stabbings or disease or famine whatever on the news well but your view is making it yeah yes (laughs) (laughs) Uh, yeah that that's the irony to that that is huge irony see this is why i'm not perfect for this field at all (laughs) is that because like straight up like you know I, i would think me but also my demographic would say that too is that i would like to be able to see like uh, sweatpants and hoodie version of a person talking and reporting mm-hmm. because like what's the funny stories that we usually make memes of like like for example uh, uh, was that in Ohio hide your kids hide your wife <laughs> yeah. like if you would have had him giving you the news <laughs> all the time I'm pretty sure that like a lot of people will retain that shit <laughs> well did you see though a recent reporting of the guy who the reporter was at Yellowstone National Park and he's trying to do his stand-up before his re- recorded stand-up and the buffalo were coming at him and he goes Mm-mm, nope not messing with you <laughs> yeah, yeah exactly so I think that like honestly like it makes it makes sense to have them as organic and as true as possible so one mm-hmm. of the things that I've impl- implemented in my my recordings is I don't take out ums and ahs which like you remember is in audio and any kind of editing is that you, yep. you take those out which I'm like no nope, keep that shit in because of fact that I like think- go ahead it makes it more organic yes so I believe that it makes it more organic it makes it more true um, and especially when you talk about people who are making history is that uh, there's so much imperfection in history and like, you know, mm-hmm. in greatness, I guess you would say. And so I, that's one of those things I just never right. hit. And so to sit there and say that, like, you, you have to be blonde hair, I like I mean, fuck the demographic. Like, let's get to the point and the, the core of the issues. And I think that that's, that's a form of labeling without realizing that like your reporter only has to be it means five foot five or five foot six and yeah. uh five foot eight with heels and then wear a red dress and reporting um <laughs> with uh blonde hair and blue eyes or red hair and i mean green eyes or something like that so uh you mean that's you mean fuck the demographics when it comes to that it's really about like i think do you think that as a as a like a producer do you think that that would change do you think that, like, if you were to sit there and force somebody to see um, Isabel from New Mexico reporting the news in Wyoming, uh, the state itself, do you think that that would change the demographic uh, or, like, the, the idealism of who's a reporter and uh, meteorologist? Mm, I would like to say yes, but I don't think it ever will. I think it's always going to be what's going to get the media's attention, what's going to get the people's attention to watch the show. It's never about news anymore. Ever since everything started, it's not about news. It's just what will the viewer watch? Like if you watch a morning show, it's always an hour long show or two hours, depending on the channel, you know, and the first half hour of the show is coming at you hard with hard news here we go we're going 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 for about 20 minutes 
And then after that, it's like, here's the sad, here's this happy story. Here's something that viewers did. Here's an interview. Here's this happy story. They're trying to get the news and then they're trying to make you stay for, oh, well, here's this happiness, you know? Yeah. Um, man, that almost feels like those 90s montage when they show those people like uh, if you could see me, like when they sort of person like look like they strangling somebody. But then like when the credits show like the camera, like like focuses on them, you see the person turn to the like the camera and just like smiles. You know what I'm talking about? Like those old 90s TV shows. Yeah. Yeah. So it, it's like I'm going to like you catching a serious moment and all of a sudden like, no, 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 we're, we're feeling good. We're, we're OK. Yeah. Yeah. My name is Tom Sawyer. <laughs> so, um, wow. So, idealistically, like, where do you where, where do you see yourself in the next like five to ten years, Sam? Um, you know, I don't know. That's the hardest thing. Is like I love what I do. I love directing. I love TD and all that. Everything about production makes it worthwhile to come to work. Um. Maybe the next five years, moving up to a bigger market so I can get more news across to people, work, see what everything's like at a corporate kind of level, like um, like the direct NBC, WGN, ABC, something like that. Um, but after that, I don't know, I kind of want to go back and teach because the way that we learned media and news and production work was awesome. It, made me super excited wanted to learn more but then you go into the field and it's like everything you learned means nothing so i want to work in this field to figure out what can be changed and how can we change it for the next incoming generation i I would agree with that Uh, i would agree with that and i think that you would make a good professor or teacher um i (laughs) don't think that what we learned was like solidified in us I would say that like for example like James Ford and what uh, Professor McCarger taught us helped us so much more but like you know the creativity definitely is on you like you have to kind of like breed yourself to be this field and one of the people that I kind of one of the the scenes that I loved most in the past the best scenes in 2019 that nobody talks about is when Elton John talks to his mentor and his mentor says that you have to kill the person that you ought to be to be the person that you want to be and I I highly believe that is definitely a true thing when it comes to media is that you have to kill this idealism that you're going to be perfect and like I love the name History Williams. Like, don't get me wrong. And I don't know. Mm-hmm. Do you remember when we used to make jokes about like what was going to be our radio, uh, like our on air name? Yeah. <laughs> so I don't. I don't feel like Jason Blanks stuck. I don't. I don't. I don't know. I, I don't think Jason Blanks <laughs> is like a like a catchy thing. You know what I mean? <laughs> so like, right. I mean, well, um. Uh, hello, everybody. My name is Jason Blanks, and this is ESPN. And like, I don't feel like it worked as well as like you know. Whereas I'm more, I guess you would say hip hop when, when I talk, and when I, you I mean, I, I definitely am more geeky when I talk about stuff. But like, History Williams kind of stick, and it, it rolls off the tongue for me a little bit better. But um, I do want to say that like I have to kill off Jason Blanks before I record on air I, I do yeah. I do have that and I think that like the same thing with you you just said that like I had to do a whole programming and coding and just basically say like fuck this this whole like murder thing like that just happened yep. I have to make sure that this production like looks good so I can report that this murder mm-hmm. thing happened so um Do you agree with that? Do you feel like you have to like kind of like erase yourself a little bit when you do your production? I'm sorry. That's my long way of getting to that point. (laughs) I can't speak for like anchors because I I feel personally like the way they present themselves off air is completely different from how they present themselves on air. So, yes, in a sense, they do kill off who they are to become the best reporter or the best reporter anchor they can be me i'm very stubborn um finally realizing this i'm gonna admit it (laughs) but i will never change who i am or my opinions just to please someone else so the way i do things the way i react or um do 
everything in my work is 100% genuine, genuinely me. So if I think this is the best way of showing something to someone or coding something or doing my job, I'm going to do it just because it's been working. It looks nice. People are noticing my work. So the fact that you have to change yourself to just fit in this tiny little box that people say this is correct just aggravates me. I don't I don't like it and I wish we were able to make it so that society could look at everyone and say that's uniquely you and that's how I want it to always be instead of wow, you try to show your real self. Nope, we got to change that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, and um we we're a little under 15 minutes we we have left, but um I will say this is that um I don't feel like I feel like that still gives us the wrong message of who we should be, uh, like who we should strive to be and who our heroes mm -hmm. are. And so uh, one of my heroes from growing up, uh, my wife makes fun of me as uh, T.C. Carson. I don't know if you remember the TV show called Living Single. He was the guy who played Kyle Barker on T.C. Carson. I've heard it. I don't think I've seen it, uh, though. You, girl, oh, Lord Jesus. <laughs> uh, you have Hulu? You have Hulu? Yeah. Oh man, look up Living Single. It's dope. Um, the guy name is Kyle Barker. <laughs> he uh he has this um uh his name is T C Carson. Um he also mm -hmm. actually coincidentally, he was one of the the exper uh like inspirations behind me wanting to do media when I was a kid. Um so he had this movie at one point in time. Um <sighs> Living single, what was it? I gotta remember the name of. Give me, give me, give me one quick second. Uh, I even gotta look it up. God, crazy. Um, give me a second on that one. But uh, with that, um, <laughs> yeah, I, f fuck. I, I, I'm gonna dig. It, it's gonna, you know, the crazy thing is, I, I could see it in my head, and, um, and I just can't remember the name of the movie. Um, but he played the voice of Kratos on God of War. I, that's the easiest way that you can probably... You, well, you don't know video games. Jesus. Gotcha. What did you... <laughs> what did we teach you? Come on. Um... <laughs> But nothing apparently <laughs> nothing nothing at all absolutely nothing um let's go all the way to the 90s for him 93 living large that's the name of it uh, <laughs> god damn it uh dexter jackson that's that was his name uh in living large which was about him being a reporter um but um, God, I forgot my point. Is um, I used to <laughs> <laughs> shit. TC Carson, God damn it! Why did you do this to me? All right, uh, Sammy, you was listening to me what I was talking about. <laughs> what we, we just talking about? We literally went from Don't politics to what the fuck happened? Uh, <laughs> was it no genuinely being yourself? Stuff like that. Yes. Okay. Genuinely being yourself. Okay. Good. So if you would have seen more people just being like uh, on screen, that's why I asked you earlier about like, would it make more sense to be able mm -hmm. to see uh, Isabel, who's from New Mexico or whatever like that, or Mexican, and being able to actually mm -hmm. like publish those things? And I feel like if we truly were like the, like that, I think more representation would give more avenues for news like we already as uh broadcasters and i want to say journalists i get if you want to argue my point my position as a broadcaster or journalist um you already rely on these people for independent media not only like regular podcasters or vloggers but also news stations they rely on these videos from twitter and that other people personally pick up why don't we show the video uh, a, a picture or the image of the person who is publishing that information um right just so that a person can a legal issue which sucks yeah what that, that if does. they did this like why if it's in the public sphere why can't we use it yes that's what i'm getting you're not gaining media is not gaining profit technically yes. from using your work yes you're probably gaining more from them using it yes. but legally we can't cool yes which that's what i'm gonna say is that like you mean <laughs> Um, I'm a firm person and believing that if you see it, you can be it. So, I mean, mm -hmm. 
if you see a person out there with with their iPhone 11 taking good video shots and practicing like and they look just like you you'll be able to believe that yeah. like you can do these things you may be able to be able to pioneer like motherfucking Sammy is doing right now in Indiana <laughs> like and believing that like they can actually change the game when it comes to media and I think that that's where the fluff pieces come from because of the fact that we're so busy like picking and I'm saying we but like picking at almost like straws trying to figure out where the yeah. bottom of the, the haystack is at you know so um I would say that definitely I think more representation will definitely help news um I think it's dope that you're doing what you're doing and you're fucking saving the world every day um yeah. you mean now with that there's a girl possibly in California who may be listening to this mm-hmm. podcast right She's about 16, 17 years old and she's like, fuck it. I want to be a vlogger. I want to be a social media influencer or I want to just be a director. What would you tell her when it comes to going into your field? Um, You know, I would tell her personally, I'm not really big on these vloggers just because, you know, all I see is like the Logan Pauls of the world when I see vlogging. But there are people that actually do these blogs and it's super well well organized super newsworthy and they're getting the right sources i would tell that girl who if she's listening i would let her know like you be 100 percent you if you want to do real world kind of news like things with your vlogs with your podcast with your newscast do it do 100 percent of the work actually do 200 percent of the work and make sure you get your point across as well as the story if you're gonna do your hey this is me happy fluff piece do it do it 200 percent of the way don't ever do anything short because no one will take you seriously then oh you hear that little girl <laughs> you better be listening oh <laughs> <laughs> uh, i i I would definitely agree with that. Um, and then the last thing is, what would you tell the professor who's teaching kids like this little girl who's striving to be in this field? Mm-hmm. I would definitely tell him, first of all, thank you, because the people I look up to the most are my professors. I still owe them everything because they made me become who I want to be. But I would tell them to remember that you're not just there for a paycheck. You're shaping, you're molding these people that are coming into this world. You no longer have to be a part of that world, but they do. Remember that you have to stick with the times, you have to adapt, you have to change and make sure that their thoughts, their opinions, whether they go against yours or they go with yours, you support them 100% on that. Because without your support, without a professor saying, I back you 100%, you go out and you do this, why would anyone want to do it? If they think everyone's out to get them, everyone's out to change what they're doing, everyone will give up at some point then. You you hear that, Professor Harvey? You hear that? I'm joking. I'm fucking with you. I'm, I'm sorry for name dropping <laughs> Professor Harvey like that. Nah, uh, Professor Harvey was awesome. <laughs> Excuse me. But no, I, 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 yeah, I fully like head on I, w- I would also add is that like don't sit there in class and say that I'm going to be a reference letter or I'm going to support you after the fact if you're not going to support it don't mm-hmm. off don't offer that olive branch out I will say that yeah because like I think that there was a lot of from my experience talking to my peers and stuff like that um they had a lot of people who said the same exact thing um who said that like they felt like they didn't get no support after the fact even though they had I these people I say that Every professor is always going to have like their favorite. They're going to say like, um, these are my people. I'm going to look out for these people. But then you have professors like Jeff Kelly Lonestein, who will stick his neck out on the line for anyone. And it's, those are those are the type of people that are in short supply nowadays. I wish I would agree more people could be like that. I don't I don't know why you have to say, oh, I'll do X, Y and Z for you and then never fall through. Like, I'm the type of person that may be like, I can't do it today, but let me give me a week and I will get that done for you kind of deal. Whether or not I like enjoy doing it or I think it's going to better me, I, I want to help people as much as I could. So, I don't know. No, I I, I, I firmly believe in that. I, I think that, like, 
it, you make the most sense when it comes to saying that is that we we have these people who are professors and who are educators and they say that they're going to be changing the world and they feel like they're making a big difference but that big difference mm-hmm. it surpasses that one to three hour class that you teach you know what I mean it yep. I'm unfortunately I know that you don't get paid enough and I will argue this and this is one thought that I had at the end of this uh, I mean at, before I came into this podcast is that a lot of people are going to be able to argue that teachers need to get, and professors need to get paid better after <laughs> dealing with this quarantine yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but um, with that I would say that um, you do need to be able to extend your olive branch and keep it stuck out there like um yeah. i'm not gonna call any professor's names or anything like that um but not only just from my experience but also from other people i've just heard so many people just say that like i felt like gvsu failed me in this way um and i feel like gvsu failed yeah. me in this other specific way and it's not that gvsu is a bad school it's just the fact that like no. it felt like the networking outside of that was very limited and I will give this to you and I will say this is why I think that you make history um randomly we got back to talking and um you said hey you need a job and I was like <laughs> randomly yeah. you text me, hey you need a job I want a person to come here and like you was willing to like kind of like say come work here you know, and the same yeah. thing with Eric. Uh, I was kind of putting on Eric. I was in the middle of like planning this and I really was kind of like indecisive about what I wanted to do for my career. Mm-hmm. I really wanted to work in broadcast. And like, if you would have asked the 2017 version of me, I'd have been like, yeah. fuck it, let's go to Indiana. <laughs> like, I'd have been like, fuck <laughs> it, let's go to But I took time to think about it. And the reason why I took time to think about it before I was, I, I don't know if you remember that when I, when I responded yeah. to you, it, was, it took a few days. And it was not only me considering my wife and my kids and stuff like that, but mm-hmm. would I be beneficial to that, that organization? And one of the things that I thought was, no, I would not be beneficial to your organization. And I, I do not want to mess up your name like that. Um, yeah. And the reason why I admire you, Sammy, is because of the fact that you still stuck your neck out there. And you even did the same thing for Eric. Uh-huh. And even though like, yeah. I was like telling Eric and Eric was constantly writing me, man, and he was saying like, oh, man, it's so hard to find work in, in our field and this and that and all that. And but then like mm-hmm. never con- like showed up on it. I, I would say that never showed up on it. Yeah. Um, But I want to tell you that, like, don't stop doing that. Like, that's dope that you did that. That's dope that you recommend our peers. Mm-hmm. I'm pretty sure I can name a bunch of, like, peers right now that, that need a gig. And I yeah. I think that also one of the things that if I were to tell the professor also as well is that, like, hold on to your students that, that are just like that and teach your students to always mm-hmm. do that and to watch each other's back. Because, like, the person, the 30 kids that's in that classroom... That's all you got once you graduate. That's your networking system. Your 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 system is solid right here. And or if you see somebody that's kind of down and out, not push them down, kind of keep them building them up. So I'm glad that you are doing that and you're constantly making history because of that. So I I consider you an influence because of the fact that you have changed the perspective of me when it comes to looking at people especially women in in media but Mm -hmm. also how having a friend matters as well but also what is truly networking and what is the truly like the image of growth and hard work i will say that like you deserve a round of applause for like being motherfucking samantha like you're such a badass when it comes to like your (laughs) game and don't change you don't change you keep like striving to make people better and making yourself better so i think that you're making history constantly because of that well thank you i appreciate that like i don't always see it as making history i just see it as me going out doing what i love making sure other people do what they love making sure everyone else isn't struggling because i know how hard it was to even find this job. Like, yeah, I had the credentials. I may be a little overqualified for my job, but like, it's hard, man. Like, (laughs) as much as people say news is like an easy job, like really, there's gotta be so many jobs 
no, it's hard. Yeah, it it is. It is very hard. Like, you know, not to be- beat my drum, but like, I mean, it was really hard for me just to fix my photo to be perfect for iTunes, to be able to submit to iTunes. Mm-hmm. And one of the things that like I told uh, a family member, they were like, well, I'm not paying for this this music school. I don't understand why we need to pay for these programs. And all of them were art and design programs. And I was like, well, can you picture looking at your news? Because he's a big like conservative and he loves watching mm-hmm. Fox News. And I was like, well, <laughs> you know, that graphic for Fox News was made by somebody who was just sitting in a classroom drawing. You realize that, right? Mm-hmm. Or that, that music that says this is CNN. You know what I mean? CNN, you know, yeah. <laughs> like somebody had to sit yeah. down and learn music and sound to be able to make James Earl Jones voice sound good with that. So <laughs> it, it matters. You wouldn't even be able to hear the reporting, the, the talking, the dialogue mm-hmm. clearly if it wasn't for a person who just knew how to do music and sound design. So you need us just as much as you need the news. You know what I mean? So... I admire you and I'm glad that like you stuck to it and you decided to go a different path when it comes to uh, media instead of being the first person on the screen you're like no fuck it I want to make the screen so yeah um I think that you're a badass now I know this is in uh, our interview and I want to make sure that I keep doing these and I'm gonna I'm gonna go on air when I say this I'm going to get you, Samantha. <laughs> and you're going to be part of A Narrative Media. I'm working hard on trying to make this happen. And Samantha, yeah. you're going to be able to show up at work with your hoodie on and some sweatpants, okay? <laughs> I like that. Yeah, I like the sound of that. <laughs> I, I will be able to help you. I'm hoping to be able to do that. Uh, the last thing is um, I don't consider my episodes episodes I call it them challenges and mm-hmm. I call them challenges because I'm challenging myself not only to learn about somebody new and be able to actually be able to find something um another story to tell I guess that's the easiest way to say it is yeah. um and it's not my job to tell that story that I, I let that be for you I only thing I can do is touch and agree um mm-hmm. so who would you challenge me to be able to communicate and uh talk to uh, about this, your field possibly, or even any other field. Like, who would you challenge me to contact and be able to interview on the Making History History Ranking podcast? Um, you know, I would definitely say, look at some, some of these bigger networks, but look at these smaller reporters that are constantly out risking their lives, out doing the stuff that the anchors don't even ever see. Everyone looks up to these anchors. If you can look at a station that has these small reporters who are bringing you these breaking news stories, but the anchors get to do it as breaking news, what are their challenges? What are they facing on a daily basis? Because none of us know. Everyone's going to be able to point out like, you know, like the Savannah Con 3, Hoda Copy, stuff like that kind of thing. But could you tell me what, uh, what anchor went and actually got that video or what reporter went out and found this story? Like... The challenges they face on a daily are probably the hardest things anyone can face. Okay. So uh, I apologize to make your name drop. Do you have anybody in mind that you can make uh, that you think I should go talk to that's like that? Well, we do have one of our anchors here. Um, he started off, he's from Chicago. Uh-huh. Um, I hugely respect him. And he's constantly making waves change in our community. Um, he does a lot of African-American summits. He goes out and he makes people know the diversity portion of news, makes people understand that it's not just a social aspect, it's a cultural aspect to every story. And he has to overcome that on a daily basis because people just see him as this 26-year-old black man from Chicago. Oh, all you know is Chicago. All you know is your urban area. You don't understand what it means to grow up in like a wider society in um, a higher developed area like um, Notre Dame where there's comes from money. Oh you God, don't let me get on. We that. live our lives compared to yours. Oh he, God. <laughs> yeah. Oh, that's so box. I just really want to stand up on. <laughs> he's just, a, I really respect him. He's such a strongly independently mind person. He will take the story and make you listen to it. He won't just 
tell you it. He'll make you listen. Okay, and what's that anchor's name? I'm going. I'm going to go. I'm going to get him after. His that. name's Joshua. Sh- Joshua. Yeah, his name's Joshua Short. Joshua jo- Short. Okay. Um, and he actually knows Professor Jeff Kelly Lonestein. He had okay. him as a professor at Columbia. Ooh. I'm going to go after him. So yeah. and I'm sorry to sound like a, a threat in that way, but uh, I'm, I'm going to, I'm going to make my interview with him. So, um, uh, Joshua shorts, yeah. I'm coming for you, baby. And trust me, I'm, I'm ready to talk. <laughs> uh, with that being yeah. said, I, I'll, I'll connect with you later. See if I, I have another way I can get in contact with him. Um, with yeah. that, I appreciate you Sammy, me. And I, I know that you don't consider yourself making history, but like, you're making history every day and you're you're changing the world and don't even realize it you you fucking like you got a friend in me and hands down like i swear to god when i renew my vows you're gonna be one of my best men uh oh, yes. <laughs> uh you're gonna be you're gonna be one of my girls men. I, i'm hands down making you one um because yes. like you've been my homie for so long um and I appreciate you and I I hope the best for you and I want you to keep contact, contact with me. I'm sorry. Contact with me and keep being the best yeah. fucking Sammy that you can possibly be. Yeah. Oh. I mean, I, it, I wouldn't be literally, I tell everyone this all the time. If it wasn't for meeting like you and Josh and Jacob and Savannah and all them in our 184 class, I would not be where I am. You guys like help shaped and show me like this is a path I need to be doing. This is something I need to be pursuing and showing other people how important it is. Like, I respect everything you guys have ever taught me. Uh, see, I mean, I'm not going to bang my own trauma. I am pretty fucking awesome now that you thought it. <laughs> you, you, <laughs> um, you are pretty awesome. Uh, yeah, you got to bang your own drum to that. Yes. I, I'm, <laughs> I, I mean, I'm, 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 I'm pretty, I'm pretty dope. You know what I mean? I got, I got somebody that married me because I'm, <laughs> uh, because I was a good person. So, <laughs> but yeah. thanks a lot for the interview. Uh, I, I, I love you. You're like an amazing person. Definitely stay tight, Sammy. Stay tight. Um, uh, thanks a lot for the interview. And I'll, I'll talk to you a little bit later, okay? Awesome. Well, thank you so much, man. Thank you. Uh, I am super excited that I got the chance to interview my friend, Sammy. Like, this person has been like a really good friend for, to me for well now it's been more than three years but uh we've been friends since 2015 and um i'm sorry 16 and it's it's some years and it's really dope that like how long uh, we known each other but also to see the growth not only in her but also the people around her and the people that was part of my <laughs> CMJ which is like the multimedia journalism class 184 um, okay so um, I will be able to put uh, more where you can find Sammy in show notes I'm definitely gonna <laughs> um, be able to do better by finding that information as well but excuse me um, being able to find where you can find where you can find Sammy as well. Um, my name is History Williams, and this is the Making History History Making podcast. I'm super excited that I got a chance to be able to talk to another history maker. Um, that was awesome, uh, and I hope that you guys enjoy the show and keep making history, keep striving for better. Stay dope, stay breezy. Peace. you you just went through a cultural experience and looking for more or simply disclosure now if you want to challenge me to interview someone you know that is making history email me in the link in the description 
Also, if you're looking for more of Making History History Making Podcasts, then remember that you can find it on Spotify, Google Podcasts, Luminary, iHeartRadio, and more. You can also find more content by History Williams on A Narrative Media Facebook page and YouTube. These pages include events, tutorials, and even a gaming stream. Speaking of gaming, if you are a blurred, nerd, Latin yerd, or simply a gamer, you can check out Talk A Big Game on Twitch under History W. That is capital H, lowercase I, lowercase S, capital S, T-O-R-Y, capital W. Or the Facebook page, A Narrative Media. Also, don't forget to check out the merchandise in the links in the description. We have various types of merchandise to choose from and show your support for History Williams and a and This includes bags and apparel on Redbubble. More colors for your t-shirts. You find those on Tee Public. Or if you're a coffee drinker, grab a bag of the biggest roast coffee from Custom Label Coffee. When you buy a bag of Custom Label Coffee, make sure you use the promo code SLOTHGAME to get 10% off. Finally, for the closure, it would be cliche to say follow, like, subscribe and share but that is not completely why i am doing this and that is not the brand that i want to build with a and i want to earn those things from you my goal and dream is to provide you as the listener or viewer a cultural experience that is not only entertaining but informative as well my final goal is to make you feel as though you have a community every time you listen to this show so when you hit that follow subscribe share or like button just know that you are part of the history makers and narrators that strive to grow and build a better connected future for all of us. So know that every time you hit those buttons, you're challenging yourself and me to keep making history. You folks stay awesome and keep making history so that you too will be on this podcast.